Asia stands at the front lines of global climate change. On this program, we'll spend the week examining climate conditions in Asia. As a basis for analysis, we'll refer to a report published in June 2025 by the World Meteorological Organization. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres made the following statement on last year's edition of the report. Some records are just chart topping. They are chart busting and changes are speeding up. Just a year later, Asia's climate conditions have shown worsening results in a number of fields. In this five-part series, we present the climate-related dangers faced by Asia at this very moment. In the first part, we'll examine an array of data presented in the WMO report. 2024 was a year filled with serious climate anomalies in Asia. China had its highest temperatures in 70 years. Indonesia faced thousands of hectares of drought. India saw 1.65 million people grapple with flood damages. In Pakistan, glacial flooding forced the evacuation of thousands. The most fundamental indicator is the average worldwide surface temperature. The WMO has used six types of data to analyze the average temperature in Asia. It discovered that the average temperature has increased by 1.04 degrees Celsius compared to temperatures observed from 1991 to 2020. Noticeably, the rate of temperature increase between 1991 and 2024 is around twice that of between 1961 and 1990. This also equates to around twice the average global speed of increase. Judging by area, Japan and the Korean Peninsula, China and the Arabian Peninsula all showed marked increases. Sea surface temperature is another strong influence on weather patterns in ecosystems. In 2024, heat caused the sea surface temperatures in Asia to rise to record highs. Over the past 10 years, these temperatures have risen 0.24 degrees Celsius. This too is around twice the rate of the rest of the world. The continuing state of extreme heat affecting the ocean is known as a marine heat wave. WMO reports state that the marine heat wave of 2024 was the worst ever in Asia. Another subject referenced by the report was the land-based ice regions known as the cryosphere, specifically glaciers. The mountainous area between the Tibetan Plateau and the Himalayas composes the largest region of the cryosphere aside from the North and South Poles. The glaciers of Asia have been subjected to intense warming, which combined with reduced winter snowfall brings about large-scale melting. Among 24 glacial locations surveyed by the WMO, reductions were observed in 23. In Sikkim, a state in northeast India along the Himalayas, melting caused the collapse of glacial lakes. We decided to go to the dam and the dam was going to be able to get the dam. So we didn't get out of it, so we didn't get out of it, so we didn't get out of it. The state government counts the dead and missing at over 100, with around 90,000 people suffering damages. The question is raised. Why have so many climate indicators been worsened in 2024? Some at double the worldwide average. We asked Dr. Hijioka Yasuaki of the National Institute for Environmental Studies. Geographically, Asia is a vast continent with extensive inland areas, making it difficult for the cooling effect of sea breeze to reach many regions. The reason for the high sea surface temperature increase rate 
may be due to the relatively large increase rate in sea surface temperatures in areas near continent, as well as the potential influence of significant temperature increases in continental inland regions. Another indicator is sea levels. Six observed areas in Asia have each risen more than the worldwide average of 3.4 millimeters. Temperatures causing thermal expansion and the water from melting glaciers flowing into the oceans are cited as causes by the WMO. Bangladesh is located at low elevation and the yearly rise of between 3.8 and 5.8 millimeters is also above the worldwide average. Since 1967, rising sea levels have inundated around 66,000 hectares of land there, forcing between 50,000 and 200,000 residents to relocate each year. In the report, the extreme events caused by climate change are also described. This chart shows the course of tropical cyclones in 2024. 26 were reported, functionally identical to the yearly average of 25.1 from 1991 to 2020. However, four of them being concentrated in November is listed as an extremely unusual occurrence. Irregular rain was also common in 2024. Despite being located in a desert climate with an average yearly rainfall below 100 millimeters in the United Arab Emirates, 259.5 millimeters of rain was experienced in just one day, a rainfall the likes of which had never been recorded since observation began in 1949. However, rainfall and snowfall have not increased over Asia as a whole. This map displays yearly precipitation in Asia compared to the average from 1991 to 2020. Increased precipitation levels are marked in green and reduced levels in brown. Inland China has contended with an extreme drought that has affected some 4.76 million people, causing damages to over 330,000 hectares of farmland. Economic losses have exceeded $400 million as a result. Between heavy rains and droughts, 2024 seems to have been a year of extremes. I suppose that this is a result of the interaction between the El Nino phenomena and the global warming. Although mitigation measures are important for addressing this issue, the impact of climate change can't be entirely avoided. Therefore, we must also pursue adaptation strategies. The report also emphasizes the importance of response to weather-related disasters. In September 2024, three days of rain in Nepal led to numerous floods and landslides, causing over 200 fatalities. However, through early prediction, evacuation notices, and coordinated response, more than 130,000 people are estimated to have been saved from a worst-case scenario earning recognition from the WMO. As future objectives, administrative preparation of disaster prediction systems and establishment of community level methods for transmission of information were listed. Celeste Saulo, the WMO Secretary General who oversaw the report made the following remarks. It is imperative that our actions today are based on the welfare of future generations rather than short-term economic interests. As Secretary General of the World Meteorological Organization, I am now sounding the red alert about the state of the climate. As the series continues, we will focus on several countries within Asia we will analyze the phenomena occurring there in the hope of gaining insight toward potential countermeasures.